Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talks with Tony. I uh, got an email here. You know, I was just talking to my, my videographer and we were talking about these emails. It, you know, it's, it's quite a few of them. And I'm reading these for the first time with you all. And so to keep my work down so I don't have to hire a whole nother staff to vet all of these emails, you know, I want y'all to understand some of these are long, some of them are short. So when you hear an episode, make sure you catch up on the ones you've missed. Go back, listen to the one before, you know, set an alarm in your phone to be reminded. We're going to try to release these every Wednesday and Sunday if we're able, just depending on my schedule. So to this email, thank you for all that you do. Hey, you're welcome. Please help me with this. I was introduced to a church about four years ago by a guy I was dating. Things got so toxic and abusive, me and him were separated and he left the church. I continued to go to the church. I began to grow and meet people, but there was one person in particular that caught my eye, a minister in training, very smart, tall, handsome, educated, family oriented, you name it. The only thing about it, he's married. I admired him from afar because I knew he was something I couldn't really have. Fast forward, about four months ago, we decided to do some business matters together. I don't drive anymore because of a vision impairment I developed, so he came to me. Meeting up with him was very racy the very first time. He stayed over for hours and we ended up kissing. I didn't think much of it. Fat, you didn't think much of it? Okay, excuse me about that. Fast forward again, we still touch base on a business level. Then one day he told me how angry he was with his wife. She had been out all night and put him in a position to be embarrassed and questioned by the church. He asked, could he stop by after church because he didn't want to go home? And I said, sure. Well, I ended up having sex with him. Two weeks later, he showed up at my door drunk and we had sex again. It was even more intense this time. Now I'm stuck. I still go to church, but it's clear there is a thick tension between me and him. He keeps trying to make me feel like it was my goal to sleep with him and the business stuff is up in the air. All the while, his wife knows he has a history of cheating but thinks he's been delivered. Am I foolish? Because I also feel like if they were ever separated and he wanted me, I wouldn't deny him. Help, please. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna have to do okay, okay. I'm answering this, but I'm I see I'm gonna have to do another video too on Instagram. Mm. If any pastors, if you a pastor and you watch my podcast, you watch my YouTube, email me today and bring me into your church to do a relationship seminar. Every, every uh, member need to be there. This absolutely, this absolutely, this absolutely is just, it, it, it's so painful. It's so painful, you know, for, for this to be happening in the church with a minister in training who is married. Now, I want everybody who listened to this, who fell out with the church, you're not Christian, you're against God. This have nothing to do with, with Jesus Christ. They have nothing to do with Christianity. This has to do with human nature and our sinful nature. Now, sis, this is where you played yourself. When you see a man, this to every woman, and me and my videographer was talking about this, you know, with these lessons, this for everybody, not just the person who wrote in. This for every woman. When you see a man that you are attracted to, and you know he's married, stay away. Stay away from intimate relations. If you're going to do stuff, it needs to be a business transaction. 
Like if you paying him to wash your car because he has a mobile detail company and he wash your car, it's sitting in the driveway, he wash it, you cash app him or whatever app him and he gone about his business, that's different. I'm married. So what you describe, now I ain't tall because I'm just 5'10". Uh, I might not be educated either, but very smart. I don't see that, but maybe wise. Family oriented, handsome. I don't know if I'm handsome, but I know I ain't ugly. So what you describe, it could be women who feel that way about me. I'm a Christian just like he is. I'm a minister just like he is. I just minister outside of the four walls. I'm married just like he is. So here's the thing. This is what I do. When me and you do coaching, it's by phone. Women say, can we do Skype? Can we do it in person? Nope, I don't do in person. I don't do it because I got too much sexual energy. I don't do in person coaching. You got to pay me a whole lot of money to do in person coaching. And, and, and I know if you paying that, you, you serious about some coaching. and But I don't do in-person coaching because I know I got too much sexual energy. Not me coming on to you, but I just know my swag turned up. And so, and I know this from living my life over, over the years. Just dripping swag goo. I can't sit in person with you for an hour and you not feel a certain kind of way. And so, especially in an intimate setting, and we talking deep and, and making love to the mind. That's what communication is. So, I set those boundaries. I'm not doing Skype because I don't want to look at you in the eyes for an hour. So, no Skype, no in person. I coach by the phone. Yes, as one of the top coaches, life coaches in the world, I coach by phone. You know why? To create boundaries for safety, for reasons just like this. You lust after the man in church. So you in church sinning, lusting after the man, and then you do business with them. How did these, you say, so fast forward about four months ago, we decided to do some business matters together. How did that come about? Y'all just, y'all wasn't just walking past each other. Oh, I, Oh, excuse me, bumped into you, uh, let's do some business together. So no, one of y'all had to get in position. You got in position or he got in position. So what you felt for him, all this that you described, very smart, tall, handsome, educated, family oriented, you name it. Sister, when you feel like that about a man, he sees it. He sees it in your eyes. It's oozing. Through your pores. He felt all of that. Sister, he felt all of that. So now he knew you was open. A man know when a woman attracted to him. We know it. We could tell it. And some men, what you describe, he know most women attracted to him. Nine out of ten women attracted to him. Because a man who attracted to one woman is a lot of times attracted to other women. Same go for women. If you're attracted to one man, you attracted to other men. So he already knew. So you or him got position, y'all start doing some business together. You can't drive because of a vision impairment. So he comes to you. Where y'all at? What you mean he coming to you? Uber? Where do you live? Where do you live, sister? You have Uber. So you were supposed to get on Uber and get driven to Starbucks so y'all could sit and talk. But oh no, y'all don't want to do that because y'all will look like y'all in sin if one of the church members see you. So it sounds like he came to your house. Yeah, he came to your house because he came back later when he started knocking you down. So you let the man come over to your house. You don't even know him. It was very racy. Y'all stopped talking about business plan and y'all talking about open leg plans and y'all kiss. You say you didn't think much of it. You didn't think much of kissing a married, married minister in training that you're supposed to be doing business with? Sister, 
Look me in the eyes. If you listen to this on the podcast, you might want to get on my YouTube. Look me in the eyes. You need your prayer warrior. You need your prayer warrior. You got, a, you got a spirit on you. You got a spirit on you. Spirits attract spirits. Your relationship with your ex who introduced you to the church was very, very toxic. That was, it was very abusive and toxic because of your spirit. Your spirit fueled and reinforced the abuse. Now, it, and, and this is how I'm saying this, because this ain't every woman. Some women, spirit is perfect and clean and get abused. But this what let me know your spirit off. Because you was being abused, the relationship broke up. You stayed at the church that the man introduced you to. Most women ain't going to do that. If a man introduce a woman to a church and that man become abusive and she got to leave that man, that woman leaving that church because she don't want no parts of anything that that man was connected to. You stayed at the church. That means you got a spirit that like to wallow in your mess. So you stayed at the church and then you got with another man who is married and a minister and you knew it and you scouted him out. You had your binoculars on and saw the man, scouted the man out, knew he was what you want, a tall glass of water, want to lick him from head to toe. And you still put yourself in a position. You know what you was doing, sister. You know what you was doing. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. Hey, I'm your big brother. I'm going to just tell you the truth because ain't a lot of people ain't going to tell you the truth. I ain't going to make no excuses for you. You know what you were doing. The man flipped it on you and said it was your goal to have sex with him. Sister, it was your goal to have sex with him. You know it and I know it. Because if you know you're attracted to a man and you know he married, you're not going to invite a married man, especially a married minister, to your house. To your house. And then kiss them and then not think nothing about it. If your spirit in the right place, when y'all kiss, you would have never talked to that man again. You would have called him or text him and say, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to move forward because my spirit is grieved from what happened. And you are a married man. And I realize that the way I feel about you and the way I view you, I'm not going to be able to do business with you. You know what? It's a woman that told me that before. She said, Tony, the way I see you and the way that I'm attracted to you from doing coaching sessions with you, I'm not going to be able to continue coaching with you because I know that I am very attracted to you and you are a married man. A woman told me that. I respect that woman to this day because she ain't have to tell me that. She could have baited me and she could have played on my weakness, played on my insecurity. She could have played on that in me of a man What's in a man, she could have played on that and she could have took me down. She could have took me down. And some women, it's women out there, you know, like yourself, that will do that. That will know the nature of a man and still you take part in being a part of the lust in a man. It ain't just he need to hold himself accountable. You got to hold yourself accountable, too, because as a woman, why are you letting a married man come to your house? house. Come on now. You wrong for that. Y'all supposed to have two, three of y'all in the gathering. If he going to come over, it need to be a group gathering, a life group. Y'all need to have three, four members in there. So it's not just you and him. So then that right there happened. He made up some. His wife was out all night. His wife wasn't no out. His wife wasn't out. That's what he had to tell you to, to get you to drop them guards even further. His wife won out. Because if your wife was out all night and it caused you to be in a position to be embarrassed and questioned by the church, you're going home to get some scraping with your wife and you're doing everything you can to try not to go outside her head because you that hot. But you're going to get some straightening immediately. He lied to you. The situation wasn't what he said it was. But he knew you had to feel that he was off with his wife so that you would drop him guard some more. He came on over and he knocked you down. Goal accomplished. Then he did the Jedi mind trick and flipped it on you. Flipped it on you. Then the next thing you know, 
he stopped by two weeks later drunk. So now this minister in training, he playing with God all the way. Let's say it's him and his wife going through. Yeah, they're going through. Yeah, because he got a history of cheating. So his wife might have stayed out all night, but she might have stayed out all night trying to send him a message for his cheating. Because what he doing to you, he doing with other women too. Better believe it. Better believe it. What he doing with you, he doing with other women. You one of a few. You playing the fool. You playing yourself. You need a prayer warrior in your life. You need some deliverance. He need deliverance to you, but he ain't writing me, so I'm talking to you. You got to work on you. You need some deliverance. And so, so him and you, both of y'all wrong. And you know what? It's a hot corner in hell. It is a hot corner in hell for you if you don't get your life together. If you don't repent, you, you go to church, you believe in God, then you believe it's a hot corner in hell for that right there. Because both of y'all guilty. Both of y'all guilty. You just as guilty as he is for knowing better and not doing better. Come on now, sister. Come on now. I got to talk to you like I talked to my little sister. She's two years younger than me. Got to give it to you blood raw. Hey, you say, am I foolish? I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to call you foolish. I don't know if I'm going to call you foolish. Do you have a Jezebel spirit? Do you have a Delilah spirit? Samson and Delilah. Do you have a Delilah spirit? Do you have a Jezebel spirit? That's what we got to get to. What kind of spirit are you operating from? It ain't about foolish because you know exactly what you was doing. You ain't, you ain't a fool by far. You know exactly what you was doing. So it ain't about foolish. Are you evil? Are you operating from an evil spirit? You a single woman with no kids. If you get married to a man, would you expect your sister in the sisterhood who go to your church with you to have enough self-respect to not allow your husband who has cheated on you in the past and you know have a history with cheating, would you hope that she would have enough self-respect to not allow your husband to come into her house? Listen to me, sister. This deeper than what you think it is. This so deep because you done sowed seeds that you're going to have to reap the harvest. So when you get married, nine out of ten times, guess what's going to happen? This very thing. This very thing you're going to wake up to find out that your husband cheating on you with another woman who operating from the same spirit that you operating from right now. You're going to get a husband that's a tall glass of water, tall glass of chocolate milk, and he going to be out here meat slanging on you with women who got the very spirit that you operate under. See, the thing about it is in the church, we get so caught up talking about don't judge me, don't judge me, be easy on me, be soft on me. No, accountability is painful. Accountability is painful. I think it was Apostle Paul that told us to hold our brothers and sisters accountable. And he said, don't worry about them getting mad, getting in their feeling because sorrow leads to repentance. You need to feel sorry because you need to repent. You need to feel stupid. You need to feel foolish. You need to feel ignorant. You need to feel evil. You need to feel all of those feelings to drive you to repentance, to know that you got to change your life because you're better than this, because you know better than this. You weren't raised to be this woman. You weren't raised to be no side woman, being a temptress, being a hindrance to the kingdom work. If he going to sin and do what he's doing, let him do it. But let him do it with somebody else. So that it's between them. Don't put your name in the mud. Don't erase your name from the, from, from the book of life by living in willing sin. So sister, listen, repent, cut them off completely. And truthfully, you need to lead the church. You need to lead the church. The church don't, don't, don't need you. The church, it's another church that can benefit from your renewed spirit. Repent, renew your heart, renew your mind and go serve somewhere else. But you can't serve back right there. You can't serve where you done messed up at that, that bad. So either you need to leave, you need to leave the church because you done been through one bad relationship and you stayed at the church. Now you're in another bad relationship. You need to leave the church. You need a fresh start with a renewed heart, a renewed mind, and a renewed spirit. And you need to cut this man off. You ain't got to expose him to his wife, but you need to cut him off. You need to block his number and you need to never talk to him again because you're talking about if he separated with his wife, you wouldn't deny him. That right there, sister is the problem with women in the world today. 
Y'all don't, y'all don't love each other. Y'all don't care nothing about each other. It's every woman for theirself. Men, we got more respect than that for one another. And it might be because we know life on the line. We know a man will kill you. So I don't know why y'all women do this to each other, but it's wrong. It's wrong and it's nasty. And you need to fix it, sister. Listen to me what I'm telling you. Hey, if you got a question for me, please send it in. Now be ready for this real truth that I'm going to give you because y'all know I ain't going to pull no punches on you now. But please send it in to me. Thank you so much. God bless you. Send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. We'll talk soon.